Jimmy, happy Wednesday. It's second best day of the week, right next to Thursday. But we're reviewing season four, episode seven of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. And let me tell you this, Jimmy. This was a really good episode. I thoroughly enjoyed today's episode. Great episode. Yeah. Great. After having like the last two that were like, okay, but kind of filler, as you mentioned this week, I felt like there was a bunch of really interesting visitors coming on the ranch, a bunch of really interesting information as well. And I was like, this was a good episode. I really, really liked it. If it would have been a third week of filler, it, it, it would have been checkout mode. Checkout mode. Yeah, just talk to me about season five. Let's let's just move on to season five. But no, today was a great, or was it last night? When does it air? It aired last night, but we okay. are reviewing it today. I, I mean, I watch it today. I didn't, you know, I have a show uh, to do. So, um, but uh, okay, can I tell everybody about this morning? Let's hear it. Okay. Tell it in, tell it in two right. minutes or less. All right. All right. No, I'll, I'll give it 30 seconds. So last night after the show, I was exhausted. I was just tired. So I went straight to bed out. Just I, I put on a movie. I don't I, I don't remember the movie that I turned on. So I woke up this morning at 7 a.m. My normal time, right? 7 a.m. And I I woke up. I reached over and I grabbed my sleep mask and I put it back on and went back to bed at 11 o'clock, <laughs> 11 a.m. My phone's ringing and it's Christina. I was like, uh, she goes, did you just wake up? I said, man, what time is it? And, and, and I looked over and my TV was still on and I was like, I watched a movie last night. What did I, I don't even, I, I still don't know what movie was on last night. I was that tired. I was just exhausted. And so, yeah. So this morning since 11, it's just been go, go, go. I had to do the news. I had to watch Skinwalker, you know, prep for today's show. Um, but I'm pretty rested, <laughs> pretty rested. I'm, I'm good to go. But that was, that was my day. I, that sleep mask works, you know, just blocks out everything and you just go into blackness and, and it was wash, rinse, rinse, uh, repeat. I went straight back to bed, but anyway, uh, do let's it, do, it. do it. This was, uh, an exciting episode. Well done. Um, Started off with, I'll, I'll hand this off to you, but it opens with uh, Jay Stratton uh, is visiting the ranch. Of course, the former director of uh, the UAP task force. And for me, one of the things that was revealed, um, spoiler alert for everybody, um, Jay says that he coined the term UAP. That he invented the term UAP, and and now I've got to go back. I'm I'm, I'm going to historically fact check that just a little bit. But isn't that interesting? If it's uh, Jay Stratton, that we could put all of the uh, responsibility of UAP replacing UFOs. I thought that was a pretty little little tidbit in in this recent episode. It was, and Eric's expression was absolutely hilarious. I think everyone in the audience could really resonate with that facial expression of just like pure shock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? But as as Jay had mentioned, and and there's there's controversy with the term UAP. It's just been recently used. People have been saying it's a few decades old, but then just came into light again. And so for Jay to say this, I was a bit shocked. I'm not going to lie to you. But he had mentioned in in the short segment that he was in near the beginning was that he wanted to get away from the ufo stigma so he kind of wanted to rebrand in a sense um the work that he was doing because he did work for uaptf he did work alongside osap as well which was during the bigelow era so he's had his fair share in the research when it comes to the ufo phenomenon and people on the inside who i guess who we would classify as people on the inside but it 
overall, I was really pleased to see someone with his credentials to go on the record, to go on camera and to tell not just one experience, but several, 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 several. I was very, very, truly very shocked again with with the people that he's worked with being a part of UAPTF, being a part of OSAP and him being allowed to come on the show um, and tell, again, just a handful of maybe the hundreds of things that he had encountered. But one of them, what I found really interesting and something that you and I have talked about in our other shows like Mysteries with a History, and that was in one experience that he had with with a team. So it wasn't just him. They all saw something really strange in the sky. However, however, as Jimmy says, they were all different shapes. So one person saw a sphere, another person saw a a cube, but no two people saw the exact same object in the sky. And he asked, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, he was kind of asking himself and the team, are they working with some kind of intelligence some kind of trickster intelligence what's going on here are these ufos only allowing us to see what they want us to see and is it personal to every single person and i found that really really cool really interesting really fascinating as well for a tv show with it with such a big audience to even touch on something like that and i think that with As the episodes progress, as the seasons progress, they're kind of jumping more into what I would classify as kind of taboo topics that we don't have a lot of information on, but that are kind of sprinkled throughout the episodes. It makes me think back and say, why did he say that? And why would they place that on the TV show when when there's so much other information that they could have provided. Eric had mentioned that only 0.7%, 0.7% of the stuff they do on the ranch makes it on the TV show. That right there, what Jay had mentioned, uh, I found pretty odd that that did make the show. Yeah, and in this shot that uh, Christina has got here, which is the opening sequence, right, and they're rolling into the ranch, uh jay um and uh, uh uh travis taylor are are chatting and jay says um it was a very interesting comment he said dude I, I was a complete skeptic you know coming into this i was like nah can't see, uh, nah and 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 travis said you know so was i i was a i was a complete skeptic um, so interesting way to to start the episode off. And then Jay immediately uh, says, um, uh, when they arrive at the ranch, he, he starts to, he sits down with the team, and he s- starts recounting a few things. And one of them was very interesting. He says that the first day there, he was standing outside looking at the mesa, and he sees a black triangle. And he says, it's, it's right there. It's above the mesa. It's moving across. He can see it. And he says black triangle. And then he says it just, uh, so I guess from his uh, his perspective, from his right to his left, um, it just flew away and disappeared. And I thought that that's it wasn't so much the UAP aspect of it. It was the black triangle a description, you know, coming from Jay Stratton, you know, former director of uh, the UAP task force. Um, he knows the significance of a statement like that black triangle. Um, and then um, he, they, they go on to do these experiments, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. It was very interesting uh, part of the show. Um, but he says this. He says that him and I, I think he said three or four uh, of his buddies, or maybe it was two, but they decided to take a walk on the ranch. And so they're out walking at night. And they're walking towards the direction of Homestead 2. There it is. And uh, that the moon was out. And the moon cast a shadow uh, on this tree that formed a line across the road. And he said the temperature drops. 
and he thought that that was significant, but that they couldn't cross the line. They couldn't cross the shadow. Pretty interesting thing to say. I'm not sure. Again, right, the paranormal, the supernatural aspect of this that you were referring to earlier uh, comes into play. But you're thinking to yourself, what do you mean you can't cross a, a shadow line? But that's what he says. And then he follows it up with this, Christina. He says that on the roof of Homestead 2, was a shadow being a black shape standing on the roof of Homestead two. This is coming from Jay Stratton. And now we're getting into right. The woo factor, the crazy town stuff. You can say black triangle. Okay. All right. That's fascinating. It's very interesting. Um, but then to say that the moon cast a shadow across the street and you couldn't cross it. And then while you were tripping on that and the temperature is dropping, you then see a ghost or uh, a black entity standing on the roof of uh, the structure that is now called Homestead 2. Um, pretty shocking revelations, don't you think, out of Jay Stratton? It, it was. And Travis had mentioned uh, what after what when Jay had told his story, saying, well, that's kind of weird because there's no floor uh, on the second floor. There's no roof. So if it was a person, it wouldn't have been possible. But Jay had mentioned that it was a very tall looking shadow person. And I'm seeing in the live chat a lot of people talking about um David Grush and um, what's been happening lately. And so UFOs are in the news and I have a bunch of requests to do a show on the latest whistleblower revelations. So tomorrow for Mysteries with the History, we sh- we shall deep dive into that. Jimmy and I will be going into, into depth on those aspects, which is going to be really, really interesting. So if you're interested in what people are saying in the live chat, you do not want to miss tomorrow's show for Mysteries with the History. And Android, thank you so much. I bet Jonathan Grush Ray is Jay. How much we betting? Do you know what Android's referring to here? Yeah, uh, Gray, uh, Jonathan Gray. We we don't know yet. And this this goes back to David Grush and the article that came out from Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal uh, uh, on Monday on the debrief, of course about. The United States being in possession of flying saucers and alien beings, and this has been going on for decades, and he, he's a whistleblower and, and so forth. Well, in the article uh, by Kane and Blumenthal, there's a quote um, uh, backing up uh, uh, David Grush by a retired, they call him a generational military officer, Jonathan Gray. And Jonathan says that the phenomenon is real and so forth. Anyway, um, we don't know who Jonathan Gray is. It may be a pseudonym. Uh, It may be his real name. We don't know. There are some. I'm going to find out more tomorrow night uh, from John Greenwald. He's going to be on Fade to Black. Um, That Jonathan Gray may be the name that this particular person uses in social media. Uh, without giving away his identity. I don't know yet. Um, Still trying to get to the bottom of uh, this Jonathan Gray character. Mm, Good to know. I'm excited to hear tomorrow's fate to black. And Cassidy, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. But moving on um, to, to Jay and Travis and the rest of the team, what I really liked about this episode was kind of the chemistry that Jay and Travis had. Both of them worked for the UAPTF, and during that time frame, Jay was kind of, was the higher up, and the tables had significantly turned when he returned back to the ranch, where Travis was saying, "Pretty much, you're going to be the guinea pig here. We're going to do a test. You don't know what the test is, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be great." And and uh, Jay's face, it, it was very, in my opinion, it was very funny. It it was while it might have have looked a little bit expressionless. There was a lot of expression behind it. And what they ended up doing, the team, is that they placed Jay in a in a uh, Jeep. And I'm going to go back here. 
and they put a bunch of equipment on it and they did a whole trail around the uh, around the ranch and then they did that exact same experiment when jay wasn't in the car because near the near the beginning ish of the episode jay had mentioned that the ranch reacts to everyone a little bit differently and for him to say that is uh really piqued my ears for sure mm -hmm. and so the team thought to themselves okay we should do an experiment see how the ranch reacts to jay and there were some significant findings do you want to get into that next or should we talk about the next guest that uh, came in uh no no let's stay right here on this because okay. Um, uh, first off, I own a Jeep. So anytime a Jeep is, is, is a cast member, I'm always interested. <laughs> right. So, so, uh, they, yeah, you're right. They have two Jeeps. They have the red Jeep, which is the one that they're in here. And then they've got a security Jeep in the back. I think it was Caleb, right? Right. Uh, was in the Jeep behind them armed and dangerous just in case very good move uh travis did tell uh, uh jay that he wasn't going to be shark bait i thought that, that was pretty interesting no worries it's not going to be dangerous you're not going to be shark bait so what they've done is they put a bunch of sensors in the car um they have a gps tracker on the hood of the car um and uh a, a different sensors are in the back and i don't believe that jay could see anything right they're just gonna drive and then take measurements send jay on his way then do the control experiment right with the same sensors and drive along the same path and do the con comparisons um a little bit of a spoiler alert again um they didn't show and maybe we'll see it later they didn't show the control experiment all right they, they didn't but they did show the data for it uh, okay so um but now back to the point so they go they're driving and i i had mentioned this shadow right homestead two and the shadow that was uh across the street uh, that was cast from the moon onto a tree and so um uh, uh jay says yeah it was about right here i think that was the tree and he points at it and and then they keep on driving then they go and they review the data at that point do you have a shot a screenshot of the data i do okay so pull that up and Okay, the next shot. That one. Okay. So the this is GPS data. And so if you can see where it takes a dip underground. Okay, so right there is where the shadow was cast across the street. Where they, or dirt road, I should say. Um, where Jay felt that they couldn't walk past. But at that point, it shows Jay is about a thousand feet underground. I <laughs> did the GPS data just goes whack. And uh, that doesn't make any sense. And if you move forward, the dotted line, that's Homestead 2 there. So now what does this suggest? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows what this suggests. The the location of it and the fact that it was Jay in the Jeep. Um, and that was the point where he said that the shadow was crossed, uh, crossing the street that was being cast by the moon on a tree and they didn't want to walk past it. And that's where they saw the entity on the, on the roof of the house where there is a homestead too, where there is no roof, right. To stand on. That is where this GPS data goes completely whack and shows Jay's position. They were saying roughly 1000 feet underground. Now that's, that's scientific data. That's 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 bizarre. It's strange. I just don't know what it means. Uh, what do you think it means, Christina? 
I am also not sure, but this isn't the first time that we've seen something similar to this on the show. And Jay also noticed that there were some data points missing as well. But I always go back to the sighting of a shadow entity being seen coming out of a portal on the ranch during the Bigelow era. What is it with these shadow entities? And are we are we to assume that they are menacing or evil or is it all just down to a single entity that is a trickster and interdimensional or even even an alien? OK, what do we do with these types of sightings, Jimmy? Well, um, now here's I, I, I don't know what to do with this data. This data is confusing to me um, and I'm glad that they've got. The data, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, here's, here's, um, they, they said at the beginning of the episode, they brought up the dome under the mesa and the second anomaly under the mesa. Um, they didn't circle back to that in this episode, which seems to me that they're setting up for the next episode that we're going to hopefully get to some conclusions there. Uh, because of the drill site and the other things that are happening with that. Um, but there's something strange going on, you know, and, and when you look at the Mesa in the background and, uh, and you see everything is normal, right? There's nothing crazy with the GPS. The GPS just goes wonky right there where Jay said the shadow crossed the road. And that's where Homestead two is. Um, and, and for GPS data, to position something a thousand feet underground um, at that position, I, you know, I hate to use the word coincidence. You know, I, I I just don't like that word. But here's the data. What does it represent? I don't know. You know, this is this is a situation where we've got a lot of smart people um, at the ranch. We do. Now you need to bring in somebody that's an engineer. Um, for one of the GPS companies that, uh, you know, manufacture satellites and writes the software and builds the hardware, um, an industrial designer, engineer, software experts from the industry to come in and help explain this because they may find this data just as interesting as us. Um, uh, but there's got to be an explanation. We just don't know what that explanation is. And we also saw the preview for next week, the next week's episode, and they're doing ground scanning and there, uh, there are circles in the readings. And in my recent interview with um, Tom and Candace, they said several times that the phenomenon manifests underground, on the ground and in the air. And are there a number of structures underground, not just in the Mesa? OK, could those structures be manifesting in the GPS data? It would be pretty interesting if they repeated that experiment with Jay, but we only were able to see it once. Did they did they repeat that experiment? I'd like to hope so. But if not, I hope they, they do at some point. It's crazy data. And, you know, the, the, there was another data point that was collected today that you didn't mention. Blew my mind. When they interviewed Jay later, right, he's at his house. He's a guitar player. Yeah, I saw Did that. You, you see that? <laughs> he had a PR. I thought of you. Yeah, he, <laughs> he had his Fender app. And in the background, he had a, a turquoise colored Strat hanging on the wall. I was like, Jay Stratton, trying to be Jimmy Church. But, um, but uh, Jay Stratton's a guitar player. And uh, he, man, it just elevated right there, right there. Good, good on Jay. Good on Jay. Okay, before we run out of time tonight, as yeah. interesting, uh, we just spent 25 minutes on this. As interesting as all of this was, nothing compared to the trail cam. I have that. I have that. And I did. Okay, now this one, with all of the news that we have breaking this week and all of this information that is happening and and the US it, it just fit in a little bit too perfectly too perfect too crazy so um they installed uh, let's go back to the purple lights real quick just for a second 
a few episodes ago, Thomas saw this flash of a purple light out in the distance and they caught it on camera. So they go out and installed uh, trail cams, I think five, I I could have that number wrong, but they uh, installed some trail cams in some trees. And so Caleb went out on a mission uh, uh, in this episode to collect the memory sticks, right? The memory cards and replace them. So he comes back and he was with, uh, who was he with? He was with Dragon. He was with Dragon. That's right. I was going to say it was Thomas. It was Dragon. And here they are. They're popping in the, uh, the memory cards and they're looking at the footage. And they caught a single frame of something crazy. And there it is. Now, when, okay, so... Yes, it looks like a metallic sphere, everybody. There's no question about it. Um, Christina, when when they were watching it and it did the blip, did you think it was a flash of light or did you think it was an object? That's a great question. Um, When I I saw this, um, if it were to be a flash of light, we would have seen a little bit more of a reflection, hopefully, and it wouldn't have been in one frame because... Uh, trail cams I thought, I thought hold on hold on because trail cams can one. capture about 15 frames per second that's pretty significant so it should have been in more than in one frame but it looks like a reflective sphere here and they were kind of kind of gauging on how big this item this object might have been they weren't sure but from my understanding looking at the footage that was presented if it was coming from like the side, right, you would have seen that blur. You would have potentially seen like a blur trail. But if it was coming towards the camera, right, at a very, very high speed, it might have looked uh, like something that we are seeing here in that one frame that looked a little bit more clear than mm-hmm. something coming on the side and looking probably more blurry. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of questions attached to this, such as, What's really going on here? Is it just a random metallic object? Is it a reflective sphere? Sphere? Is it part of the trickster intelligence that so many visitors have mentioned that something new that the trail cam was there and it was going to play tricks on them? Is it aliens? We don't know, <laughs> but spheres are being seen everywhere everywhere not just on the ranch but across the world and especially in the news lately like the um Mosul orb as well i mean this this is we're seeing a lot of these orbs these reflective spheres um and so this little piece right here fit almost too perfectly in the news lately yeah and and it's just one frame so they go frame before frame after it is not there it just appears right there in the single frame and um clearly um it's spherical it looks either white or metallic It, it does There's a little white blob on the right side of it that when you see the before and after, that's also not there too as well. No mention about that in the episode, but I'm curious about that. Um, It doesn't show motion. It's not blurred. Um, For a single frame capture, it looks like it's just there. Also, again, I need to reiterate. I need to be very clear here. They go the frame before and the frame after, it's not there. It's not like it moved across the the field and and they've got uh, some other images. They do not. They only have this single image um, where it appears and disappears. It's a very interesting artifact, have anomalous. I have no idea uh, what this could be, um, but uh, I cannot believe... Um, that they were able to catch this when you're you're looking through um, hours and hours of footage, you know, and you're just sitting there and you happen to catch this, um, you know, for, for that instant, it's a single frame. Um, We got really, really lucky, but there it is. I have no idea. That is a fascinating shot. Fascinating. I have now uh, look, if it was a balloon, All right. Now, I don't know what it is. It could be a balloon. I don't know. 
But you would think if it was a balloon, you would see it meander in, meander out, blow in the wind, come from above, rest. If, uh, maybe if it was a balloon and it came down, it would have sat there for minutes and would have been, you know, shot on video for a while. We would have seen most. No, no. All we have is this one single frame. You go before and after, it is not there, so we don't know what direction it came from, um, how it got there, or where it went. It's, it's it, to me, the highlight of the episode. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought, uh, Christina, going back to my point, uh, when they first showed it, I thought it was a flash of light. That's what I thought. I thought, oh, it's just a blip, right? And when they went back and freeze-framed it, I was like, what is that? I thought it was a flash of light. I, I really did. It's just something reflecting off of the distance. Um, no, you don't expect to capture something like this on, on video. It's a pretty incredible shot. I wish we had more. It looks big as well. And, and you have the trees for size context. And it could have kind of popped in and popped out of our reality, maybe. So it, it is either going very fast, but it isn't blurry. So it's maybe, and I had mentioned this a little bit earlier, maybe it's heading towards the camera and captured in a frame. But for instance, a flash of light, you would see more of an illumination in the immediate area around it. We didn't see that here. No, 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 no. Look, to be clear, everybody, I I don't know what we're looking at, but this thing appears and disappears in a single frame. And so Christina mentioned this is shooting at 15 FPS, 15 frames per second, 15 frames. So in one second, you're taking 15 shots. This is one frame in that one second window of 15 shots and right in the middle of that is this it's a single frame that's correct it's man i you know and when you're taking 15 shots a second you would see it uh, you know what uh, uh, you would see it let's say it uh it's a portal let's just let's just go there let's go full woo okay all right let's go full woo if it's a portal, right, wouldn't you see it kind of in 15 frames a second? Wouldn't you see it kind of appear and then be there and then disappear in the next frame after that, <laughs> right? In three frames, right? Something appearing and then appeared and then disappearing in those three frames. We don't have that. We don't. It's 15 frames in a second. I mean, this is a second. Okay, you're taking 15 shots in that. And this is one of those 15. It's incredible. I don't know. I Man, I know video. I know audio. I understand the technical processes behind it. I do more than I should. This is crazy town. Well, I say 15 frames per second, but it could have been 30 frames per second. They didn't say what kind of trail cam it was, but I have uh, I, I have looked this morning at like the standard shooting range of trail cams, and it is for the most part about 15 frames per second at um, 1080 by 720 resolution from the majority of trail cams that I looked at. So let's say they got a higher end one, right? That means they're probably working at 30 frames per second. Again, we don't know, but at the very least, it's 15 frames. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I asked last week before we wrap up uh, the show uh, today, um, I had asked last week about, um, uh, let me see here. Okay. Um, I just got some breaking news coming in. Had nothing to do with us. Okay. Um, uh, the size of the ranch, it's 512 acres. It's 500. That's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of ranch. That's a lot of acres. It's 512. Um, looking at this shot, the reason why I bring that up, I don't know, um, how far away from the trail cam that this orb is sitting. I don't know the distance between the trail cam and that first ridge line of trees. 
that is there. But it's very easy to triangulate. They know where the trail cam is. You go out and you measure it. You've got a digital range finder. And then we can find out the size of this object. Looking at it, I, I, it, it looks, if, if I'm looking at this, I see four feet, right? But what if it's 10? What if it's 20 feet in diameter? What if it's just two feet? I don't know. Um, but we can get all of this information, and I hope that we find it out in a future episode. One last thing I would like to mention before we end today's show, and that was the second person that came on the ranch, Don uh, Mitchell. He is part of the Shoshone tribe, and he went and he looked at the at the um, fence post. But he also, what I thought was really cool, was that he also conducted a ritual to respect the land, to respect the land and ask for protection before continuing on the investigation of what's going on there. When he was looking at this, because he has a background in um, in firefighting, he had mentioned that if it was lightning, if it was a regular fire, there would have been a stream of smoke coming up, kind of like when you burn a candle um, in in a glass container. You're going to see that, that that black smoke coming up. We're not seeing that here. So he went into the possible idea that the only other time he had seen something like this, where there was no debris provided at the bottom, no debris that was left there after the incident, um, no black smoke. He said that the other time that he had seen this had to do with plasma cutting and he said in his opinion it definitely was not lightning but the last thing that i would like to mention is that well he, they uh dragon and caleb asked well what do you think is really going on here and he says well it seems like it's decently unexplained but remember the name of the ranch and then he continued i don't want to go where any further i don't really want to speak about these things and then caleb had had was on screen and he mentioned that for the majority of, of native american tribes they do not like talking about the skinwalker because talking about it thinking about it, researching it can attract those entities to you and attract that negativity as well, which is very scary. But he did not see any carbon residue on the post from any smoke or any debris or burnt debris. So that's why he came to the conclusion that it could potentially have been plasma cutting. Yeah, the, the plasma aspect uh, was was a great point, something I hadn't thought of. I was always thinking lightning. Um, but the plasma part of it uh, was interesting that there was no soot and no smoke residue uh, because if it was burning, you would have seen that continue up uh, the fence post and that he felt that it was plasma and uh, some type of uh, instant high energy. Yeah, very interesting take. And you're right about that. He didn't want anything connected to him. <laughs> he, he went right there, didn't he? Didn't he? What a, it was a great episode. I'm really looking forward to next week. I know that they have uh, another, what, what do they have tonight? They have uh, another, or last night they had another episode. Another entire show called Beyond Skinwalker. Oh, Beyond Skinwalker. So it has nothing to do with Skinwalker. It's another show called Beyond Skinwalker. Right, where new team members um, travel to other locations across the United States that are similar to Skinwalker ah, Ranch. But okay. it has to do with the team for Skinwalker as well. All right, all right, all right. Good enough, good enough. See you next week. I'll see you tonight on the show. I have got uh, a filmmaker from Australia. Damien John Knott is uh, on with me tonight. Well, we'll be talking, you know, he's he's a, a UFO, UAP filmmaker and, and contactee. So we're going to be discussing a lot of things tonight. And I'm sure that uh, David Grush uh, will be a big part of the conversation. I do want to mention everybody. Uh, and again, thank you, Christina. You've got the best audience. Um, you got the best audience. There's both of our audiences uh, here today. Well, I, I, I just want to thank the audience and that I uh, want to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow night we did a schedule rechange. Uh, uh, I'm bringing on uh, John Greenwald Jr. of the Black Vault tomorrow night. Uh, this David Grush whistleblower situation that the world finds itself in right now is a really, really big deal. Potentially the biggest news in the history of, of everything. 
And uh, tomorrow night we'll be covering every angle of it on Fade to Black with uh, John Greenwald. So I'll see everybody tonight on Fade to Black. Christina, another great review of Skinwalker. I look forward to next week. Thank you so much. Thank you.